Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to talk about blood histology. What is in the blood, all the different things in there. So um, we start off with our uh, slide of all the formed elements in the blood. Um, and so we've got red blood cells, red blood cells, also called erythrocytes, erythrocytes. Um, hopefully my dog in the background will be too loud, but if she is, I'm sorry. Um, so our red blood cells are erythrocytes. These bigger guys that are bluish stained, those are white blood cells, also called leukocytes. And then we have our little bitty teeny tiny guys. This guy right there is one of them. And those are the platelets, also called thrombocytes. And those are the three formed elements that we need to know um, as far as histology in here. So those big three things, can you recognize them? Um, on site, what are you looking at? Recognize it. Um, as far as numbers, how many of them are there? And then what's the job of this cell? What does this cell do? So first up are the erythrocytes. So our red blood cells, and that is why our blood is red, is because it's filled with uh, erythrocytes that are chock full of the protein hemoglobin. And hemoglobin's job is to carry the oxygen and bring that oxygen to your tissues um, and then take away the CO2. But we're going to bring the oxygen in on the hemoglobin. So that's its function. As far as um, recognizing these, they are the majority cell. They are 99% of all the cells in your blood are going to be these guys, um, the red blood cells. And so these guys are kind of biconcave shaped. So the inside is going to look a little bit thinner, lighter colored than the outside. But they're the red blood cells. So they're usually red on the side. Some of our slides um, look a little older. And I feel like that pigment is a little bit faded and they look a little more gray. Um, so we have a variety of different cells, different slides um, for you to choose from and be able to see these in different elements. So I, I like to give you lots of different pictures of the slides because um, real life is going to have lots of different images of lots of different things and you need to be able to recognize it. So um, we have a few different images of all the different types of red blood cells that we have slides of um, here. So we've got all the different erythrocytes. Their job, again, is to transport gases, transport oxygen. And as far as numbers, these are going to be four to six million, four to six million uh, per cubic millimeter. So per cubic millimeter um, is how many red blood cells that they are going to be. So numbers, four to six million, function, transport, uh, gases move that oxygen and um, recognize them on site. They are red. They are the majority cell that you're going to see in your side of blood. Next up is thrombocytes, our platelets. So our thrombocytes are these guys at the end of the arrows right here, all these little cute little purpley dots. Um, and they are small because they are not actually whole cells. They are actually pieces of a cell called a thrombocyte uh, stem cell, which is the megakaryocyte. Megakaryocyte, that is going to be our mature cell that produces the uh, thrombocyte pieces. So these guys are not whole pieces. Uh, they are not whole cells, sorry. They are not whole cells. They are pieces of a cell. So there's no nucleus inside. Um, there's also no nucleus inside of the red blood cells either. So that's why they have like a max life of 120 days. These are even shorter. These are only nine to 12 days. Um, but as far as numbers, we have anywhere from 150,000 to 160,000 per cubic millimeter as far as numbers. What is their job? So where red blood cells job was to transport the gases using hemoglobin inside of the red blood cell, these guys job is hemostasis. So hemo blood, stasis staying the same, keep your blood in the same place, keep it in your body. Um, so these guys are gonna help with our blood clotting. So we have different clotting factors that are gonna mesh up and they are gonna capture these platelets and form a clot. So these are the thrombocytes. They're involved in hemostasis. There's 150 to 160,000 of them per cubic millimeter. Recognize these little purple dots. These tiny little things are thrombocytes, your platelets. The next group, the last group are leukocytes. All the leukocytes um, are white blood cells. In AP1, you just need to be able to recognize whole blood and that um, all those different formed elements, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets were all part of blood and it was a liquid connective tissue. But in AP2, we want you to recognize the different types of white blood cells now. So all of the white blood cells are leukocytes and we are gonna get into um, the different types of leukocytes. How many of them are there? What are their jobs? So first up, is neutrophils. We are going to go 
granulocytes first and then agranulocytes. So neutrophils are going to be our most popular white blood cell out of all the white blood cells. How do we know um, who's most popular, who's least popular? Mm -hmm. There's a little saying, um, I can't remember where, where I picked it up, but it was never let monkeys eat bananas. Mm -hmm. Never let monkeys eat bananas. And so the mm -hmm. N are neutrophils. They are the mm -hmm. most popular white blood cell. And so 50 mm -hmm. to 70% of all the white blood cells are going to be neutrophils. So these guys function as phagocytic cells. They are going to be um, guys that are going to eat up damaged, broken um, cells. They're going to eat up pathogens. They have granules inside of them. Um, so you can kind of make out that these kind of look speckled in color. Those are the granules inside, and those are going to help um, in their response um, to, to pathogens, so they're going to eat them up. So these guys are phagocytes as far as their function. There are 50-90% uh, of them um, out of all the white blood cells. How do we identify these guys? They are, again, granulocytes. They have little speckles, but their biggest, biggest, biggest giveaway is this. It is the multi-lobed nucleus. If you see a slide of a cell with a multi-lobed nucleus, it's more than likely a neutrophil most likely. I think that the multi-lobe nucleus kind of looks like a necklace with beads on a string. Each of those little lobes look like little beads on that string. Neutrophils are going to have a multi-lobe nucleus. So here's more multi-lobe nucleus over here. This guy has multiple lobes over here on this nucleus. That is its biggest, biggest giveaway. So more than likely, um, they're the most popular white blood cell. 50 to 70%. Their job is phagocytic um, and they have a multi lobe nucleus. That is their giveaway um, that you are looking at a neutrophil on our list of white blood cells. Next up are going to be our eosinophils. The eosinophils, their giveaway is this red coloration on their granules. So their granules are going to soak up the eosin in that right stain. It's going to soak up the eosin. Um, dye and that gives them this reddish color. So in this side, it looks really similar to the red blood cell color um, as far as they have these beautiful red granules contrasting with their purple nucleus on the inside. So that giveaway is the red granules. That's how you know you're looking at an eosinophil. Um, this guy, you can see the kind of granular edge to it, really bright red granules. Here's an image of a slightly older slide that we have on campus, and you can see that the red is a little bit faded, but it's still kind of similar um, in coloration to the red blood cells. It is a reddish color on those. So eosinophils are the only ones that we're going to see on our uh, stained blood that are going to have red granules red granules. That's their giveaway. As far as their job, these guys are also phagocytic, but these guys are going to be found um, when allergies crop up, these guys are going to reduce the inflammation. We also see these guys on parasitic infections. So if somebody um, picked up a parasite, their eosinophil numbers might be spiking due to that parasitic infection. So those are some of the functions that this um, particular white blood cell does. And as far as numbers, we talk about never let monkeys eat bananas. We're here at the eosinophils. They are pretty small in number compared to all the white blood cells, and they are going to be two to four percent of all the white blood cells. So identify these on site, give away red granules. Um, what is their, their function? These guys can reduce inflammation. You might find these guys if you've got a parasitic infection, and as far as numbers, two to four percent eosinophils. Moving on, next is basophils. These are going to be the last of the granules. And if we remember our saying, never let monkeys eat bananas, here we are. We're at the B for bananas, also for basophils. Basophils. So basophils are the smallest number compared to all the other types of white blood cells out there that we need to know for our lab. This is less than 1% of all the white blood cells are basophils. So if you're looking at a side and you're trying to find the basophils, they're really hard to find because numbers wise, there's not a lot of them. But the giveaway on these, if you're looking at them, they are going to be dark 
colored. Their granules, when we talk about eosinophil, are going to take up that eosin stain, and they are red colored. These guys for the basophils are dark colored. They're going to have this dark bluish color to them, bluish purple. Um, sometimes their granules are going to take up so much stain that it's even hard to make out the nucleus. This one, you can barely see it. This slide of a basophil, you can sort of make out the um, nucleus inside of there. But overall, these guys are our last granulocytes, so their edges are a little fuzzy, and they are dark. So if you have an image, a slide image of um, a blood cell, and it is looks like kind of just a solid dark ball um, with kind of fuzzy edges, you're looking at a basophil, at a basophil. So these guys are less than 1%. These guys are also going to be involved um, with allergies in the fact that they're going to promote inflammation. So when you have an allergic reaction, inflammation happens, you are going to have increased blood flow, inflammation. So these guys are releasing heparin and histamine from their granules that help um, with that situation. So that's what their job is, promoting inflammation, releasing heparin and histamine. Um, numbers wise, less than 1%. Giveaway on them, they are a pretty much a dark, lumpy cell because the stain takes up so much in those granules, it's hard to see through it and see the nucleus. So those are basophils, the last of our granulocytes. Then we are moving on to our A granulocytes. So A means without granules. These don't have granules. Um, and this one is going to be our lymphocytes. So these guys in general are going to have smoother edges. Their granules are not there. And lymphocytes jobs are going to be to produce T and B cells. And your T and your B cells are very much part of your adaptive immune system, producing T and B cells. And we will talk about that later in a whole another chapter in lecture. But that's their job. Lymphocytes are going to uh, change into T and B cells depending on what your body needs. Um, and the giveaway on these guys, they are going to have pretty clear cytoplasm. Again, they are agranular, so no granules in their cytoplasm. And they have these gigantic nucleus on the cells, really big nuclei here compared to the proportion of the cell. So they just have this little sliver basically of cytoplasm and this massive nucleus smack in the middle of that cell with just a little bit of cytoplasm. So that's how you can identify those. You are looking at lymphocytes. As far as our numbers, never let monkeys eat bananas. Our lymphocytes are going to be about 20 to 30% of all the white blood cells are lymphocytes. So identify these on site, big nucleus in the center, gives it away that it's a lymphocyte. Its job is to produce T's and B, T and B cells. And as far as numbers, it's about 20 to 30% of all the white blood cells out there. The last, but certainly not least, are the monocytes. Comparatively to red blood cells, these are pretty big. They're pretty big cells if you want to look at size-wise. A giveaway also on identification. These are agranular, so nice clear cytoplasm, um, pretty smooth edges on the side, but their identifying feature is this kidney bean-shaped nucleus. So these are really big cells and they have a really big nucleus, but it is kidney bean-shaped. It has this indentation like a kidney bean does, like your kidneys look. They have this little indentation, this little hillis. These nuclei have that too. So that's the giveaway that you are looking at a monocyte. It's got clear cytoplasm. It's pretty big compared to the red blood cells. Um, and it has a kidney bean shaped nucleus. The job for this guy is also phagocyte, phagocyte. And if we're talking numbers, never let monkeys eat bananas. We're right smack in the middle as far as who's the most popular and who's the least popular. Our numbers are 2 to 8 percent of all the white blood cells are going to be monocytes. So don't get monocytes confused with our neutrophils. Sometimes I have students that get confused between the two of them. Monocytes are big. Again, look at the size of this thing. It is really big. It has a massive nucleus that is indented in the middle. It is kidney bean shaped nucleus on these guys. These are monocytes. Don't get them confused with that multi-lobe nucleus, multi-lobe nucleus found on our neutrophils. Neutrophils, multi-lobe nucleus. Monocytes, and again, neutrophils, they're bigger than red blood cells, but not near as big as our monocytes. 
monocytes are really pretty big compared to these guys and big old kitty bee nucleus in the monocytes. So I hope this helps. Have a great day.